silent short featuring Windsor McKay, he makes a bet that he can produce 4,000 drawings in a month. 30 days later, he has the goods. And his fictional creations include Little Nemo and his friends. It's 1911, and the animation is so revolutionary that architect Claude Fayette Bragdon says the audience has witnessed the birth of a new medium. But this was not the first time New Yorkers saw the character. Before all the hoopla, McKay debuted Little Nemo in the pages of the New York Herald in 1905. There, Nemo began his adventures in dreamland, waking up in the last panel of each strip. McKay was influenced by the Art Nouveau aesthetic. The landscapes and backgrounds are rich in detail. For architectural reference, he used early New York amusement parks, as well as a Parisian palace. McKay also helped innovate page layouts for the Sunday comics. He had editors change the shapes of the panels so that his large action drawings could fit. The result impressed fellow cartoonist Robert C. Harvey so much so that he called McKay the first original genius of the comic strip. On the other hand, McKay said he only invented Nemo simply for the amusement of kids. Like any dream, though, Little Nemo's adventures came to an end. It was cancelled in 1927 over waning interest, and McKay reportedly got the copyright for just a dollar. But the spirit of McKay's dreamland is still alive today. A new Netflix movie and an upcoming video game are reportedly in the works. And Belgian comics artist Frank Pei recently published his own book, although reviews say his take on the character is rather reimagined. Pei had such creative license because the original works are so enduring that they're now in the public domain. <laughs>